Hello and welcome to book two of a reading of John Milton's Paradise Lost. I um, hope you enjoyed the introduction and book one. My name is Cathy Williams de Vries um, and I studied this as part of my diploma, uh, graduate diploma of arts and Shakespeare studies. What I'll be doing is reading through the poem because I think that uh, it really comes to life uh, when it's read out loud and uh, um, you might be able to understand some of the imagery a little better if someone else um, reads it out aloud. Well, uh, anyway, I hope I hope that's the case. So um, we come to where um, Satan and uh, all the other fallen angels got chucked into hell, um, the eternal hellfire, and uh, he's uh, he's rallying the troops in this book in preparation for um, an assault on heaven which they of course lose, or I think they were, I think they were in the first battle, but, uh, but uh, the Almighty um, defeats them in the end. Okay, so, we're up to book two. High on a throne of royal state, which far outshone the wealth of Ormist and of Ind, or where the gorgeous east with richest hand showers on her king's barbaric pearl and gold, Satan exalted sat, and by merit raised to that high bad eminence, and from despair thus high uplifted beyond hope, aspired beyond thus high, insatiate to pursue vain war with heaven, and by success untaught, his proud imaginations thus displayed, powers and dominions, deities of heaven, for since no deep within her gulf can hold a mortal vigour, though oppressed and fallen, I give not heaven for lost. From this descent, celestial virtues rising will appear more glorious and more dread than from no fall, and trust themselves to fear no second fate. Me, though just right and the fixed laws of heaven, did first create your leader, next free choice, with what besides, in counsel or in fight, hath been achieved of merit. Yet this loss, thus far at least recovered, hath much more established in a safe unenvied throne yielded with full consent. The happiest state in heaven which follows dignity might draw envy from each inferior, but who here will envy whom the highest place exposes foremost to stand among against the thunderer's aim, your bullock, and condemns to greatest share of endless pain? Where there is then no good for which to strive, no strife can grow up there from fra faction, for none sure will claim in hell pre precedence. None whose portion is so small of present pain that with ambitious mind will covet more. With this advantage then to union and firm faith and firm accord, more than can be in heaven, we now return to claim our just inheritance of old. Surer to prosper than prosperity could have assured us thus. And by what best way, whether of open war or covert guile, we now debate, who can advise may speak. He ceased, and next him Moloch, sceptred king, stood up. The strongest and the fiercest spirit that fought in heaven, now fiercer by despair. His trust was with the eternal to be deemed equal in strength, and rather than be less cared not to be at all. With that care lost went all his fear of God or hell or worse. He recked not, and these words thereafter spake. My sentence is for open war of wiles more unexpert. I boast not. Them let those contrive who need, or when they need, not now. For while they sit contriving shall be the rest, millions that stand in arms and longing wait the signal to ascend, sit lingering here, heaven's fugitives, and for, and for their dwelling place accept this dark, opprobrious den of shame, the prison of his tyranny who reigns by our delay. No, let us rather choose armed with hell flames and fury all at once, or heaven's high towers to force resistless way, turning our torches into horrid arms against the torturer, when to meet the noise of his almighty engine he shall hear infernal thunder and for lightning see black fire and horror shot with equal rage among his angels and his throne itself mixed with tartarian sulphur and strange fire his own invented torments but perhaps the way seems difficult and steep to scale with upright wing against a higher foe let such bethink them if the sleepy dreads of that forgetful lake benumb not still that in our proper motion we ascend up to our native seat, descent, and fall to us is adverse. 
Who but felt of late when the fierce foe hung on our broken rear insulting and pursued us through the deep? With what compulsion and laborious flight we sunk thus, thus low? The ascent is easy then, the offence is feared. Should we again provoke our stronger? Some worse way his wrath may find to our destruction. If there be in hell, fear to be worse destroyed. What can be worse than to dwell here, driven out from bliss? Condemned in this abhorred deep to utter woe, where pain of inextinguishable fire must exercise us without hope of end. The vassals of his anger when the scourge inexorably and the torturing hour calls us to penance. More destroyed than thus, we should be quite abolished and expire. What fear we then, what doubt we to incense his utmost ire, which to the height enraged will either quite consume us and reduce to nothing this essential happier far, this extent, this essential, happier far than miserable to have eternal being, or if our substance be indeed divine and cannot cease to be, we are at worst on this side nothing, and by proof we feel our power sufficient to disturb his heaven, and with perpetual inroads to alarm, though inaccessible, his fatal throne, which if not victory is yet revenge. He ended up frowning, and his look denounced desperate revenge, and battle dangerous to less than gods. And the other side up rose Belial, in act more graceful and humane, a fairer person lost not heaven. He seemed for dignity composed and high exploit, but all was false and hollow, though his tongue dropped manner, and could make the worse appear the better reason, to perplex and dash maturest counsels. For his thoughts were low, to vice industrious, but to nobler deeds, timorous and slothful. Yet he pleased the ear, and with persuasive accent thus began, I should be much for open war, O peers, as not behind in hate, if what was urged, main reason to dissuade immediate war, did not dissuade me most, and seemed to cast ominous conjecture on the whole success, when he who most excels in fact of arms, in what he counsels, and in what excels mistrustful, grounds his courage on despair and utter dissolution, as the scope of all his aim after some dire revenge. First, what revenge? The towers of heaven are filled with armoured watch that render all access impregnable. Oft on the bordering deep encamp their legions, or with obscure wings scout far and wide into the realm of night, scorning surprise. Or could we break our way by force, and at our heels all hell shall rise with blackest insurrection, to confound heaven's purest light, yet our great enemy, all corrupt, incorruptible, would on his throne sit unpolluted, and the ethereal mould, incapable of stain, would soon expel her mischief and purge off the base of fire victorious. Thus repulsed, our final hope is flat despair. We must exasperate the almighty victor to spend all his rage, and that must end us, that must be our cure, to be no more, sad cure, for who would lose, though full of pain, this intellectual being, those thoughts that wander through eternity, to perish rather, swallowed up and lost in the white, wide womb of uncreated night, devoid of sense and motion, and who knows, let this be good, whether our angry foe can give it, or will ever. How he can is doubtful, and he never will is sure. Will he, so wise, let loose at once his ire, belike through impotence, or unaware, to give his enemies their wish, and end them in his anger, whom his anger saves to punish endless? Wherefore cease we then, say, those, say they who counsel war. We are decreed, reserved, and destined to eternal woe, whatever doing, what can we suffer more? What can we suffer worse? If this then worse, is this then worse, thus sitting, thus consulting, thus in arms? What when we fled amain, pursued and strook with heavens afflicting sunder, and besought the deep to shelter us? This hell they'll seem, they seem, then seemed a refuge from those wounds. Or when we lay chained on the burning lake, that sure was worse. What if the breath that kindled those grim fires awake should blow them into sevenfold rage, and plunge us into the flames? Or well, from above should intermitted vengeance arm again his red right hand to plague us? What if all her stores were open, and this firmament of hell should spout her cataracts of fire, impendent horrors, threatening hideous fall one day upon our heads, while we perhaps designing or exhorting glorious war, caught in fiery tempest should be hurled, each on his rock transfixed, the sport and prey of racking whirlwinds, or forever sunk upon yon boiling ocean wrapped in chains? There to converse with everlasting groans, unrespited, unpitied, unreprieved, ages of hopeless end, this would be worse. War, therefore, open or concealed alike, my voice dissuades. For what can force or guile with him, or who deceive his mind, whose eye views all things at one view? 
He from heavens high all these our motions, veins, seeks and derides, not more almighty to resist our might than wise to frustrate all our plots and wiles. Shall we then live thus vile, this race of heaven thus trampled, thus expelled, to suffer here chains and these torments? Better these than worse, by my advice. Since fate inevitable subdues us, and omnipotent decree the victor's will, to suffer as to do, our strength is equal, nor the law unjust that so ordains. This was at first resolved, if we were wise against so great a foe, contending and so doubtful what might fall. I laugh when those who at the spear are bold and venturous. If that fail them, shrink in fear, yet they know what yet, well, what yet they know must follow, to endure exile or ignominy, or bonds or pain, the sentence of their conqueror. This is now our doom, which, if we can sustain and bear, our supreme foe in time may much remit his anger, and perhaps thus far removed, not mind us, not offending. Satisfied with what is punished, whence these raging fires will slacken if his breath stir not their flames. Our purer essence then will overcome their noxious vapour, or inured, not feel, or changed at length, and to the place conformed in temper and in nature will receive familiar their fierce heat and void of pain. This horror will grow mild, this darkness light, besides what hope the never-ending flight of future days may bring. What chance, what change? worth waiting since our present lot appears for happy though but ill for ill not worse if we procure not ourselves more woe thus belial with words clothed in reason's garb counselled ignoble ease and peaceful sloth not peace and after him thus mammon spake either to disenthrone the king of heaven we war if war be best or to regain our own right lost him to unthrone we then may hope when everlasting fate shall yield to fickle chance, and chaos judge the strife. The former vain to hope argues as vain the latter. For what place can be uh, for us within heaven's bound, unless heaven's Lord supreme we overpower? Suppose he should relent and publish grace to all, on promise made of new to subjection. With what eyes could we stand in his presence, humble, and receive strict laws imposed to celebrate his throne with warbled hymns and to his godhead sing with forced hallelujahs while he lordly sits our envied sovereign and his altar breathes ambrosial odours and ambrosial flowers our servile offerings this must be our task in heaven this our delight how wearisome attorney so spent in worship paid to whom we hate let us not then pursue by force impossible, by leave obtained unacceptable, though in heaven our state of splendid vassalage. But rather seek our own good form ourselves, and from our own live to ourselves, though in this vast recess, free and to none accountable, preferring hard liberty before an easy yoke of servile pomp. Our greatness will appear then most conspicuous, when great things of small, useful, of hurtful, prosperous of adverse we can create, and in what place soe'er, thrive under evil, and work ease out of pain, through labour and endurance. This deep world of darkness do we dread, how oft amidst thick clouds and dark doth heaven's all-ruling sire choose to reside. His glory unobscured, and with the majesty of darkness round, covers his throne, from whence deep thunders roar, mustering their rage, and heaven resembles hell. As he our darkness, cannot we his light initiate when we please? This desert soil wants not her hidden lustre, gems and gold, nor want we skill or art from whence to raise magnificence. And what can heaven show more? Our torments also may in length of time become our elements. These piercing fires as soft as now severe, our temper changed into their temper, which must needs remove the sensible of pain. All things invite to peaceful counsels and the settled state of order, how in safety best we may compose our present evils, with regard of what we are and where, dismissing quite all thoughts of war, ye have what I advise. He scarce had finished when such murmur filled the assembly, as when hollow rocks retain the sound of blustering winds, which all night long had roused the sea, now with hoarse cadence, lull seafaring men all watched, whose bark by chance, or pinnacle anchors in a craggy, craggy bay after the tempest. Such applause was heard as Memon ended and his sentence pleased advising peace for such another field they dreaded worse than hell so much the fear of thunder and the sword of michael wrought still within them and no less desire to found this nether empire which might rise by policy and long process of time in emulation opposite to heaven 
which then Beelzebub perceived, than whom Satan except none higher sat. With grave aspect he rose, and in his rising seemed a pillar of state, deep on his front and grave and deliberation sat, and public care, and princely counsel, in his face yet shone, majestic though in ruin, sage he stood, with Atlantean shoulders fit to bear the weight of mightiest monarchies. His look drew audience and attention still as night, or summer's noontide air, while thus he spake. Thrones and imperial powers, offspring of heaven, ethereal virtues, all these titles now must we renounce, and changing style be called princes of hell. For so the popular vote inclines, here to continue and build up here a growing empire. Doubtless, while we dream and know not that the king of heaven hath doomed this place our dungeon, not our safe retreat beyond his potent arm, to live exempt from heaven's high jurisdiction, in new league banded against his throne, but to remain in strictest bondage, though thus far removed under the inevitable curve, reserved his captive multitude, for he, be sure, in height or depth still first and last will reign sole king, and of his kingdom lose no part by our re revolt, but over hell extend his empire, and with iron scepter rule us here, as with his golden those in heaven. What sit we then, projecting peace and war? War hath determined us, and foiled with loss, irreparable terms of peace, yet none. Vouchsafed or sought, for what peace will be given to us enslaved but a custody severe, and stripes and arbitrary punishment inflicted? And what peace can we return but, but to our power, hostility and hate, untamed reluctance and revenge, though slow, yet ever plotting how the conqueror least may reap his conquest, and may least rejoice in doing what me in most suffering feel? Nor will occasion want, nor shall we need, with dangerous expedition to invade heaven, whose high walls fear no assault or siege or ambush from the deep. What do we find some easier enterprise? There is a place, if ancient and prophetic fame in heaven e'er not, another world, the happy seat of some new race called man, about this time to be created like us, though less in power and excellence, but favoured more of him who rules above. So was his will pronounced among the gods, and by an oath that shook heaven's whole circumference confirmed. Thither let us bend all our thoughts to learn what creatures there inhabit, of what mould or substance, how endued, and what their power, and where their weakness, however attempted best by force or subtlety, though heaven be shut, and heaven's high arbitrator sit secure in his own strength, this place may lie exposed, the utmost border of his kingdom, left their defence who hold it. Here perhaps some advantageous act may be achieved by sudden onset, either with hell fire to waste his whole creation, or possess all as our own, and drive us, drive, drive as we were driven, the puny inhabitants, if, or if not drive, seduce them to our party, that their God may prove their foe, and with repenting hand abolish his own works. This would surpass common revenge, and interrupt his joy in our confusion, and our joy uprage in his disturbance, when his darling sons, hurled headlong to partake with us, shall curse their frail original, and faded bliss faded so soon. Advise if this be worth attempting, or to sit in darkness here, hatching vain empires. Thus Beelzebub pleaded his devilish counsel, first devised by Satan, and in part proposed. For whence, but from the order of all ill could spring so deep a malice to confound the race of mankind in one root, and earth with hell to mingle and involve, done all to spite the great creator. But their spite still serves his glory to augment. The bold design pleased highly those infernal states, and joy sparkled in all their eyes, with full assent they voted, they vote, whereat his speech he thus renews. Well have ye judged, well ended long debate, signed of gods, and like to what ye are, great things resolved, which from the lowest deep will once more lift us up, in spite of fate, nearer our ancient seat, perhaps in view of those bright confines, whence with neighbouring arms and opportune excursion we may chance re-enter heaven, or else in some mild zone dwell not unvisited of heaven's fair light secure, and at the brightening orient beam purge off this gloom, the soft delicious air to heal the scar of those corrosive fires shall breathe her balm. But first, whom shall we send in search of this new world? Whom shall we find sufficient? Who shall tempt with wandering feet the dark, unbottomed, infinite abyss, and through the palpable obscure find out his uncouth way, or spread his airy flight, upborne with indefatigable wings, over the vast abrupt, ere he arrived the happy isle. 
What strength, what art can then suffice, or what evasion bears him safe through the strict centuries and stations thick of angels watching round? Here he had need all circumspection, and we now no less choice in our suffrage, for on whom we send, the weight of all and our last hope relies. This said he sat an expectation held, his look suspense, awaiting who appeared to second or oppose or undertake the perilous attempt, but all sat mute, pondering the danger with deep thoughts, and each in the other's countenance read his own dismay astonished. None among the choice and prime of those heaven-warring champions could be found so hardy as to proffer or accept alone the dreadful voyage, till at last Satan, whom now transcendent glory raised above his fellows, with monarchal pride, conscious of highest worth, unmoved, thus spake, O progeny of heaven, imperial thrones, with reasons... With reason hath deep silent and demur seized us, though undismayed. Long is the way and hard that out of hell leads up to light. Our prison strong, this huge convex of fire, outrageous to devour, amuse us round ninefold, and gates of burning adamant barred over us, prohibit all egress. These past, if any path, pass, the void profound of unessential night receives him next, wide gaping, and with utter loss of being threatens him, plunged in that abortive gulf. Gulf. If thence he scape into whatever world or unknown region, what remains him less than unknown dangers and as hard escape? But I should ill become this throne, O peers, and this imperial sovereignty adorned with splendour and with power, if all proposed and judged of public moment in the shape of difficulty or danger could deter me from attempting. Wherefore do I assume these royalties and not refuse to reign, refusing to accept as great a share of hazard as of honour, Due alike to him who reigns, and so much to him due, of hazard more, as he above the rest high honoured sets. For therefore, go therefore, mighty powers, terror of heaven though fallen, intend at home, while here shall be our home, what best may ease the present misery, and render hell more tolerable. If there be cure or charm to respite or deceive, or slack the pain of this ill mansion, it omit no watch against a wakeful foe, while I, while I abroad, through all the coasts of dark destruction, seek deliverance for us all. This enterprise none shall partake with me. Thus saying rose the monarch, and prevented all reply, prudent, lest from his resolution raised. Others among the chief might offer now certain to be refused, while erst they feared, and so refused might in opinion stand his rivals, winning cheap the high repute, which he through hazard huge must earn. But they dreaded not more the adventure than his voice forbidding. And at once with him they rose, their rising all at once was as the sound of thunder heard remote. Towards him they bend, with awful reverence prone, and as a god extol him equal to the highest in heaven. Nor failed they to express how much they praised, that for the general safety he despised his own. For neither do the spirits damned lose all their virtue, lest bad men should boast their specious speci deeds on earth which glory excites, or close ambition varnished all with zeal. Thus they, their doubtful consultations dark, ended, in rejo ended rejoicing in their matchless chief, as when from mountain tops the dusky clouds ascending, while the north wind sweeps or spreads heaven's cheerful face, the lowering element scowls over the darkened landscape snow or shower. If chance the radiant sun with farewell sweet extend his evening beam, the fields Revive the birds, their notes renew, and bleating herds attest their joy that hill and valley rings. O oh, shame to men, devil with devil damned, firm concord holds. Men only disagree of creatures rational, though under hope of heavenly grace, and God proclaiming peace, yet live in hatred, enmity, and strife among themselves, and levy cruel wars, wasting the earth, each other to destroy, as if, which might induce us to accord, man had not hellish foes now. besides, that day and night for his destruction wait. The Stygian council thus dissolved, and forth in order came the grand infernal peers. Midst came their mighty paramount, and seemed alone the antagonist of heaven, nor less than hell's dread emperor with pomp supreme and godlike imitated state, him round a globe of fiery seraphim enclosed with blight, bright and blazonry and horrid arms, then of their session ended they bid cry with trumpets regal sound the great result. Toward the four winds for speedy cherubim put to their mouths the sounding alchemy by heaven's vo herald's voice explained. The horrible abyss 
The hollow abyss heard far and wide, and all the host of hell with deafening shout returned them loud acclaim. Then more at ease their minds, and somewhat raised by false presumptuous hope, the ranged powers disbound, and wandering each his several way pursues, as inclination or sad choice leads him perplexed, perplexed where he may likely as find truce to his restless, restless thoughts, and entertain the irksome hours till his great chief return, part on the plain, or in the air sublime upon the wing, or in swift race contend, as at the Olympian games or Pythian fields, part curb their fiery steeds, or shun the jail with rapid wheels, or fronted brigades form. As when to ward worn proud cities war appeals, waged in the troubled sky, and armies rushed to do ba to battle in the clouds, before each van prick forth the airy knights, and coach their spears, couch their spears, till thickest legions close, with feats of arms from either end of heaven the welkin burns. Others with vast typhoon rage, more fell rend up both rocks and hills, and ride the air in whirlwind. Hell scarce holds the wild uproar, as when Alcides from Acalia, crowned with conquest, felt the envenomed robe, and tore through pain up by the roots the Salian pines, and like us from the top of Oeta through into the Euboic Sea. Others more mild, retreated in a silent valley, sing with notes angelical to many a harp their own heroic deeds and hapless fall by doom of battle and complain that fate. Free virtue should enthrall to force or chance. Their song was partial, but the harmony, what could it less when spirits immortal sing, suspended hell, and took with ravishment the thronging audience, in discord more sweet. For eloquence the soul, song charms the sense. Others apart, sat on hill retired, in thoughts more elevate, more reason high. Fixed fate, free will, foreknowledge absolute, and found no end in wandering mazes lost. Of good and evil much they argued then, of happiness and final misery, passion and apathy, and glory and shame, vain wisdom all, and faith, false philosophy. Yet with a pleasing sorcery could charm pain for a while, or anguish and excite fallacious hope, or arm the adjured breast with stubborn patience as with triple steel. Another part in squadrons and gross bands on bold adventure to discover wide that dismal world, if any climb perhaps might yield them easier habitation. Bend four ways their flying march along the banks of four infernal rivers that disgorge into the burning lake their baleful streams. At Horeb sticks, the flood of deadly hate, sad acheron of sorrow, black and deep. Cositis, named of lamentation loud, heard on the roof of stream. Fierce Philogethon, whose waves of torrent flame in flame with wrath, whose waves of torrent fire in flame with rage. Far off from these, a slow and silent stream, Leith, the river of oblivion rolls, her watery labyrinth, whereof who drinks forthwith his former state and being forgets, forgets both joy and grief, pleasure and pain. Beyond this flood a frozen continent lies dark and wild, beat with perpetual storms of whirlwind and dire hail, which on firm land thaws not, but gathers heap, and ruin seems of ancient pile, all else deep snow and ice. A gulf profound as that Serbonian bulb betwixt Demeter and Mount Cassius old. Where armies whole have sunk, the parching air burns frore, and cold performs the effect of fire. Thither by harpy-footed furies hailed at certain revolutions all the damned are brought, and feel by turns the bitter chains of fierce extremes, extremes by ch change more fierce. From beds of raging fire to starve in ice, their soft ethereal warmth, and there to pine immovable in fixed and frozen round, periods of time thence hurry back to fire, they ferry over this Lethian sound, both to and fro, their sorrow to augment, and wish and struggle as they pass to reach the tempting stream with one small drop to lose in sweet forgetfulness, all pain and woe, all in one moment, and so near the brink, but fate withstands, and to oppose the attempt, Medusa, with Gorgonian temper, gu temper terror, guards the ford, and of itself the water flies, all taste of living white, as once it fled the lips of Tantalus. Thus roving on in confused march forlorn, the adventurous bands with shuddering horror pale, and eyes aghast viewed first their lamentable lot, and found no rest, though many a dark and dreary vale they passed, and many a region dolorous, or many a frozen, many a fiery alp. Rocks, caves, lakes, fens, bogs, dens, and shapes, shades of death, a universe of death, which God by curse created evil, 
for evil only good. Where all life dies, death lives, and nature breeds. Perverse, all monstrous, all prodigious things, abominable, inutterable, and worse than fables yet have feigned or fear conceived. Gorgons and hydras, chimeras die, dire. Meanwhile, the adversary of God and man, Satan, with thoughts inflamed of highest design, puts on swift wings and towards the gates of hell explores his solitary flight. Sometimes he scours the right-hand coast, sometimes the left, now sh shaves with level wing the deep, then soars up to the fiery concave towering high. As when far off at sea, a fleet descried, hangs on the cloud by equinoctial winds, close sailing from Bengala or the isles of Ternate and Tadore, whence merchants bring their spicy drugs. They on the trading flood through the wide Ethiopian to the Cape ply stemming nightly towards the pole, so seen far off the flying fiend. At last appear hell bounds, high reaching to the horrid roof, and thrice threefold the gates. Three folds were brass, three iron, three of adamantine rock. Impenetrable, impaled with circling fire, yet unconsumed. Before the gates there sat on either side a formidable shape. The one seemed woman to the waist and fair, but ended foul in many a scaly fold, voluminous and vast, a serpent armed, a cry with mortal sting, about her middle round a cry of hellhounds never ceasing barked, with wide Siberian mouths full loud, and rung a hideous peal, yet when they list would creep, if aught, aught disturbed their noise into her womb and kennel there, yet there still barked and howled within unseen. Far less abhorred than these, vexed Scylla, bathing in the sea that parts Calabria from the hoarse Trinacrian sh shore, nor uglier followed the night hag when called in secret, riding through the air she comes, lured with the smell of infant blood, to dance with Lapland witches, while the labouring moon eclipses at their charms. The other shape, if shape it might be called, that shape had none distinguishable in member, joint or limb, or substance might be called that shadow seemed, for each seemed either. Black it stood as night, fierce as ten furies, terrible as hell, and shook a dreadful dart, which seemed his head the likeness of a kingly crown had on. Satan was now at hand, and from his seat the monster moved onward came as fast with horrible strides. Hell trembled as he spoke, the undaunted fiend. What this may be it might be admired, admired, not feared, God and his son except, created thing, nor valued, he nor shunned, and with disdainful look thus first began. Whence and what art thou, inexorable shape, that darest, though grim and terrible, advance thy miscreanted front, athwart my way to yonder gates? Through them I mean to pass, that be assured, without leave asked of thee, retired or taste thy folly, and learn by proof, hell-born, not to contend with spirits of heaven. To whom the goblin, full of wrath, replied, Art thou that traitor angel? Art thou he who first broke peace in heaven, and faith till then unbroken, and in proud rebellious arms, drew after him the third part of heaven's sons, conjured against the highest, for which both thou and they art cast from God, are they condemned to waste eternal days in woe and pain? And reckons thou thyself with spirits of heaven, hell doomed, and breathest defiance here and scorn, where I reign king, and to enrage thee more, thy king and God. Back to thy punishment, false fugitive, and to thy speed add wings, lest with a whip of scorpions I pursue thy lingering, or with one stroke of this dart strange horror seize thee, and pangs unfelt before. So spake the grisly terror, and in shape so speaking, and so threatening, grew tenfold, more dreadful and deformed on the other side, incensed with, igni incensed with indignation, Satan stood unterrified, and like a comet burned that fires the length of Ophiuchus, huge in the arctic sky, and from his horrid hair shakes pestilence and war, each at the head levels his deadly aim, their fatal hands, no second stroke in ten, and such a frown each cast on the other, as when two black clouds with heaven's artillery fraught come rattling on over the Caspian, then stand front to front, hovering a space, till winds the signal blow to join their dark encounter in mid-air. Mid 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 so frowned the mighty combatants that hell grew darker at their frown, so matched they stood, for never but once more was either like to meet so great a foe, 
and now great deeds had been achieved whereof all hell had rung, had not the snaky sorceress that sat fast by hell gate and kept the fatal key risen, and with hideous outcry rushed between. O father, what intends thy hand, she cried, against thine only son? What fury, O son, possesses thee to bend that mortal dart against thy father's head? And knowest for whom, for him that sits above and laughs the while at thee ordained his drudge, to execute what whate'er his wrath, which he calls justice, bids, his wrath which one day will destroy ye both. She spake, and at her words the hellish pest forbore, the knees to her Satan returned. So strange thy outcry, and thy words so strange thou interposest, that my sudden hand prevented spares to tell thee yet by deeds what it intends. Till first I know of thee what thing thou art, and thus double formed, and why in this infernal veil first met thou callest me father, and that phantasm calls my son. I know thee not, nor ever saw till now, sight more detestable than him and thee. To whom? Thus the portress of Hellgate replied, Hast thou forgot me then, and do I seem now in thine eye so foul, once deemed so fair in heaven? when at the assembly and in sight of all the seraphim with thee combined in bold conspiracy against heaven's king, all on a sudden miserable pain surprise thee, dim thine eyes, and dizzy swum in darkness, while thy head flames thick and fast threw forth, till on the left side, opening wide, likest to thee in shape and countenance bright, then shining heavenly fair, a goddess armed out of thy head I sprung. Amazement seized, seized all the host of heaven, back they recoiled, Afraid at first, and called me sin, and for a sign portentous held me, but familiar grown I pleased, and with attractive graces won the most adverse, thee chiefly, who full oft thyself in me, thy perfect image viewing, be becamest enamoured, and with such joy tookest with me in secret, that my womb conceived a growing burden. Meanwhile war arose, and fields were fought in heaven, wherein remain, for who what what could else our, to our, our mighty foe, clear victory, to our part loss and rout, though through all the Empyrean, down they fell, driven headlong from the pitch of heaven down into this deep, and in the general fall I also, at which time this powerful key into my hand was given, with charge to keep these gates forever shut, which none can pass without my opening. Pensive here I sat alone, but long I sat not, till my womb, pregnant by thee, and now excessive grown, prodigious motion felt, and rueful throes. At last this odious offspring which thou seest, thine own begotten, breaking violent way, tore through my entrails. Thus with fear and pain distorted, all my nether shape thus grew transformed, but he, my inbred enemy, forth issued. Brandishing his fatal dart, made to destroy, I fled, and cried out, Death! Hell trembled! At the hideous name and sighed from all her caves and back resounded death. I fled, but he pursued, though more it seems inflamed with lust than rage, and swift afar me overtook his mother all dismayed. And in embraces forcible and foul, engendering with me of that rape begot these yelling monsters that with ceaseless cries surround me, as thou sawest, hourly conceived and hourly born, with sorrow infinite to me, for when they list into the womb that bred them when they return and howl and gnaw my bowels, their repast, them bursting forth, bursting forth afresh with constant terrors vex me round, that rest or intermission none I find. Before mine eyes in opposition sits grim death, my son and foe, who sets them on, and me his parent would full soon devour for want of other prey, but that he knows his end with mine involved, and knows that I should prove a bitter morsel and his bane. Whenever that should be, so fate pronounced, but thou, O father, I forewarn thee, shun his deadly arrow, neither vainly hope to be invulnerable in those bright arms, though tempered heavenly for that mortal dint, save he who reigns above, none can resist. She finished, and the subtle fiend his law soon learned now minder, moulder, and thus answered smooth, Dear daughter, since thou claimest me for thy sire, and my fair son here showest me, the dear pledge of dalliance hath with me, had with me thee in heaven, and joys then sweet, now sad to mention, though dire change befallen us unforeseen, unthought of. No, I came, come no enemy, but to set three from out this dark and dismal house of pain, both him and thee, and all the heavenly host of spirits that in our just pretenses armed fell with us from on high. 
From them I go this uncouth errand soul, and one for all myself expose, with lonely steps to tread the unfounded deep, and through the void immense to search with wandering crest a place foretold should be, and by concurring signs ere now created vast and round a place of bliss in the pearliest of heaven, and there in place a race of upstart creatures to supply perhaps our vacant room. Though more removed, less heaven surcharged with potent multitude might hap to move new broils. Be this or aught that this more secret now design, I haste to know, and this once known shall soon return. And bring ye to the place where thou and death shall dwell at ease, and up and down unseen wing silently the buxom air, embalmed with odours. There ye shall be fed and filled immeasurably, all things shall be your prey. He ceased, for both seemed highly pleased, and death grinned horrible, a ghastly smile, to hear his famine should be filled, and blessed his maud, destined to that good hour. No less rejoiced his mother bad, and thus bestake her sire. The key of this infernal pit by Jew, and by command of heaven's all-powerful king, I keep by him forbidden to unlock these adamantine gates, against all force, Death ready stands to interpose his dart, fierceless to be all matched by living might. But what owe oh, I to his commands above, who hates me, and hath hither thrust me down into this gloom of Tartarus profound? To sit in hateful office he can find, inhabitant of heaven, and heavenly born here in perpetual agony and pain, with terrors and with clamours compassed round, compassed round of mine own brood, that on my bowels feed. Thou art my father, thou my author, thou my being gavest me, whom shall I obey but thee whom I follow? Thou wilt bring me soon to that new world of light and bliss among the gods who live at ease where I shall reign. At thy right hand, voluptu voluptuous as beseems, thy daughter and thy darling without end. Thus saying from her side the fatal key, sad instruments of all our woe she took, and towards the gate rolling her bestial train, forth with the huge portcullis high up drew, which but herself, not all the Stygian powers, could once have moved, then in the keyhole turns the intricate wards, and every bolt and bar of messy iron or solid rock with ease unfastens. On a sudden open fly with impetuous recoil and jarring sound the infernal doors, and on their hinges great harsh thunder that on the lowest bottom shook of Erebus. She opened, but to shut excelled her power, the gates wide open stood, that with extended wings a bannered host under spread ensigns marching might pass through, with horse and chariots ranked in loose array. So wide they stood, and like a furnace mouth cast forth redounding smoke and ruddy frame, flame. Before their eyes in sudden view appear the secrets of the hoary deep, a dark illimitable ocean within bound, without dimension, where length, breadth, and height, and time and place are lost, where eldest night and chaos, ancestors of nature, hold eternal anarchy amidst the noise of endless wars, and by confusion stand, for hot, cold, moist, and dry, for champions fierce, strive here for mastery, and to battle bring their embryon atoms. They around the flag of each his faction in their several clans, light armed or heavy, sharp, smooth, swift or slow, Swarm populous, unnumbered as the sands of Barca or Sirine's torrid soil, levied to side with warring winds and poise their lighter wings. To whom these most adhere, he rules a moment. Chaos umpire sits, and by decision more embroils the fray by which he reigns. Next to him high arbiter chance governs all. Into this wild abyss, the womb of nature and perhaps her grave, of neither sea nor shore nor air nor fire, but all in these... But all these in their pregnant causes mix, confusedly, and which thus must ever fight, unless the Almighty Maker them ordained, his dark materials to create more worlds. Into this wild abyss the very the wary fiend stood upon the brink of hell, and looked a while, pondering his voyage, for no narrow frith he had to cross. Nor was his air less peeled with noises loud and ruinous, to compare great things with small, than when Bologna storms. With all her battering engines bent to raise some capital city, or less than if this frame of heaven were falling, and these elements in mutiny had from her axle torn the steadfast earth. At last his sail-broad vans he spreads for flight, and in the surging smoke uplifted spurns the ground, thence many a league as in a cloudy chair ascending rides audacious, but that seat soon failing meets a vast vacuity. All unawares, fluttering his pennons, vain, plumb down he drops, 
10,000 fathom deep, and to this hour down had been, fall, had been falling, had not by ill chance the strong rebuff of some tumultuous cloud instinct with fire and nitre hurried him as many miles aloft. That fury stayed, quenched in a boggy surtis, neither sea nor good dry land night, nigh founded on he fares, treading the crude consistence, half on foot, half flying, behoves him now both oar and sail, as when a griffin, through all the wilderness with winged course, or hill or moory dale, pursues the Aramaspian, who by stealth had from his wakeful custody purloined the guarded gold, so eagerly the fiend, over bog or steep, through straight, rough, dense or rare, with head, hands, wings or feet, pursues his way, and sinks, and swims or sinks, or wades or creeps or flies, at length, a universal hubbub wild of stunning sounds and voices all confused, borne through the hollow dark, assaults his ear with loudest vehemence. Thither he plies, undaunted to meet there whatever power or spirit of the nethermost abyss might in that noise reside, of whom to ask which way the nearest coast of darkness lies, bordering on light, when straight behold the throne of chaos and his dark pavilion spread wide on the wasteful deep with him enthroned sat sable-vested knight, eldest of things, the consort of his reign, and by them stood Orcus and Aedes, and the dread name of Demogorgon. Ruminex and chants and tumult and confusion, all embroiled and discord with a thousand various mouths, to whom Satan turned boldly thus, Ye powers and spirits of this nethermost abyss, chaos and ancient night, I come no spy with purpose to explore or to disturb the secrets of your realm, but by constraint wandering this darksome desert as my way lies through your spacious empire up to light. Alone and without guide, half lost, I seek what readiest path leads where your gloomy bounds confine with heaven. Or if some other place from your dominion won, the ethereal king possesses lately, thither to arrive I travel this profound. Direct my course, directed no means recompense it brings to your behoof. If I that region lost... All usurpation thence expelled, reduced to her original darkness and your sway, which is my present journey, and once more erect the standard there of ancient night. Yours be the, the advantage all, mine the revenge. Thus Satan and him thus the Anarch old, with faltering speech and visage incomposed, answered, I know thee, stranger, who thou art, that mighty leading angel who of late made head against heaven's king, though overthrown. I saw and heard, for such a numerous host fled not in silence through the fright deep with ruin upon ruin, rout on rout, confusion, confusion worse confounded, and heaven's gate poured out by millions her victorious bands pursuing. I upon my frontiers he kept residence, residence. If all I can will serve that little which is left so to defend, encroached on still through our intestine brawls, weakening the scepter of old night. First hell, your dungeons stretching far and wide beneath, now lately heaven and earth. Another world hung all my realm, linked in a golden chain, to that side heaven from whence your legions fell. If that way be your walk, you have not far. So much the nearer danger. Go and speed. Havoc and spoil and ruin are my gain. He ceased, and Satan stayed not to reply, but glad now that his sea should find a shore, with fresh alacrity and force renewed, springs upward like a pyramid of fire into the wide expanse, and through the shock of fighting elements on all sides round, environ wins his way, harder beset and more endangered than when Arco passed through Bosphorus twixt the jostling rocks, or when Ulysses on the larboard shunned Charybdis, and by the other whirlpool steered, so with he difficulty and labour hard, moved on with difficulty and labour he, but he once passed, soon after when man fell, strange alteration, sin and death amain following his track, such was the will of heaven, paved after him a broad and beaten way over the dark abyss, whose boiling gulf tamely endured a bridge of wondrous length from hell continued reaching the utmost orb of this frail world, by which the spirits perverse with easy intercourse pass to and fro to tempt or punish mortals, except whom God and good angels guard by special grace. But now at last the sacred influence of light appears, and from the walls of heaven shoots far into the bosom of dim night a glimmering dawn. Here nature first begins her father's verge, and chaos to retire as from her outmost works a broken foe, with tumult less and with less 
Hulse styled in. That Satan with less toil and now with ease wafts than the calmer wave by dubious light and like a weather beaten vessel holds gladly the port through shrouds, shrouds and tackled torn. For in the emptier waste resembling air weighs his spread wings at leisure to behold far off the imperial heaven extended wide in circuit undetermined square or round with opal towers and battlements adorned of living sapphire once his native seat and fast by hanging in a golden chain this pendant world in bigness as a star of smallest magnitude close by the moon thither full fraught with mischievous revenge accursed and in a cursed hour he hides so that's Book two, please join me for book three.